Welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. I'm Kim Cavanaugh. And we're going to finish up spreadsheets a little bit here. We're talking again about OpenOffice, a mm -hmm. free alternative to Microsoft Office that allows you to do pretty much all the same kind of things. Really? It's, it's great. And we're looking at spreadsheets today. And, and you know the thing, I, I, I'm not a huge spreadsheet fan. I know you're not. not a little bit them. of my soul dies every time I have to look at <laughs> columns of figures. Well, but, let's make it pretty. Well, yeah, well, it's not just pretty. It's about yeah. how you can visualize information. How do you, you know, how do you look at a glance and tell where you stand maybe with your budget or, uh, you know, some data that you're trying to interpret? Well, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a quick, simple chart. Because okay. I've got a, a little spreadsheet up here. I've got labels on this column, A. Okay. I've got blue, red, orange, green. Okay. And then I've got number values here. Let's say we did a poll and we found out which color was the favorite for certain people. Okay. I'm going to highlight these. And after I've highlighted, I'm going to go up to our, our menu bar up here because over here on the right, you see all these pretty pictures in that? Yeah, I see well, what it looks like a bar chart with yeah, things like that. And when we roll over it, naturally it says chart. Yeah, always a good idea. To, yeah, if so you're not sure what a button does, float your... Oh, what, and what? look at this wizard that comes Whoa, up Oh Well, it already created the chart. Yeah. So the chart is sitting there, but now not only do I have that chart, I have all these different types of charts that I can mm -hmm. use. Now, this is called a column chart because it goes vertically. Okay. But if we wanted to go horizontally, we could uh, make it into a bar chart. Wow. And I see behind it there, it's yeah. actually changing as you make your bit. selection. That's pretty mm -hmm. nice. What about a pie chart? I like pie. That looks good. And you notice there's all these really elaborate types <laughs> now, of pie charts. Now, how smart is this software, Lee? Because it actually labeled these and used the right color on the labels. Mm -hmm. That doesn't wow. seem like it could be that smart. You know what? I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah. That's very good. Green is it? green. I was, I was thinking, oh, well, yeah, green is green on orange and orange. That's bizarre. That's pretty good. An area chart might not fit what you need, but right. it gives you an idea. And then you could do line, line chart. Line chart would be something that might maybe changes over time. Mm -hmm. um, then you have scatter charts, which, which really, really makes confusing. my brain hurt. Uh, net charts. I have no idea what a net chart is. Neither, but it looks pretty funky to me and a stock chart, and column and line, so you can accent where your lines are in it. Interesting. But the basic charts you're going to see most of the time are going to be a bar or column. Right, and I see a little checkbox here that you can add three dimensions to your, yeah, um, let's go your to items. Pie, and then we'll go to a 3D pie chart. And you notice that the, the image becomes oh, three-dimensional. that's much nicer. I like so we that. We can pull out the pieces so that you can it's see expanded. some edges on them. Oh, that's sweet. Now, I wonder what this drop-down here does. It's a simple... Or realistic. I have no idea what that means. Oh, I see. It gave <laughs> some shading. Ah, very good. But that's so how mostly hard just it a, was. Mostly just a visual. Now, let's say I'm doing a presentation or I'm preparing a Word document, and mm -hmm. I need to get this chart into something that I could print or show on screen. Okay, how I'll, would I? I'll click Finish here. Okay. And the chart is really much like a graphic. If I just click on it, I can right-click on that, and I can copy that. Okay. And you know what? I don't even have to stay in OpenOffice. I could actually switch over to Microsoft Word. So I'm switching between companies here. Between applications, here. right. And when I'm in my document here, I can just click and I can paste, and in comes my chart eventually. I think it pop, maybe it pop down lower on the page. There yeah, it comes. comes. All right. Wow. And that easy. Wow. That is easy. And that's, I mean, so the let's beauty go of the, Let's go through those steps again. You simply took your spreadsheet and you highlighted the ta the cells mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet that uh, had your information in them. Wrong one. Let me get okay. back here. Um, and then you clicked a button yeah. and, and chose your style. So nothing really elaborate involved. It's nothing so easy. If, if I know what I'm doing, let, let's say how long this takes. Okay. If you do that, come over to the chart button, choose your chart style. I want a 3D and I want a realistic look on it. And I finish. It takes seconds. Wow. That took less than 15 seconds to create that chart. That's pretty amazing. And you've got a beautiful chart there. That's, a, that's awesome. You could throw that into your slide presentation, anything that you mm -hmm. wanted to use it. And all you had to do is type in those values and, and Well, that's and another be beauty go. of this. Remember, it's a what-if machine. So if I come over here and I find that, well, blue actually was 55, as soon as I hit enter, the dimensions of the chart wow. change. <laughs> so I love computers. I mean, they're so... <laughs> They're so cool. I mean, the little things like that just kind of go, oh, that's really neat that you can do that so you and change those value, values dynamically. That's amazing. All right. Now, we saw there was another program called Chart, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. as part of the open office. Do you have time, do you think, to look at that real quickly? Probably not today, but well, it's the kind of thing that we might come back to. Let's is, take a quick look. Uh, it doesn't really show up in there. Maybe it's, it's in the open or file new, maybe? I wonder. Let's try in open office. Why don't we try going to file new? Oh, I see. Let's see, if, yeah. let's see if we see something there that does it. It's one of the interesting things about, again, this this kind of application. Um, they really it, don't have a, a direct program. Right. They, so it's basically. actually a plug-in. I think Chart probably is, is just a plug-in that goes into um, the Calc uh, yeah. uh, software itself. And when we're on the extensibility site where you could get extra things in there, you probably have different kinds of charts that you can right. install. Now, I see another button up there. It looks like a pencil with a line on it. I wonder what that one does, Lee. That would be to draw. Oh. Interesting. So we could uh, you know, probably come here and and just do some drawing functions in there. We don't know. We'll play with that <laughs> next week. All right. Okay. So uh, we're going to move over to our viewer mail. Here, let me grab my piece of paper. Are you ready to move, move to viewer mail? I'm definitely ready for viewer mail. All right. Well, let's talk about. We started to go into un uh, uncharted, uncharted territory. territory. <laughs> Sometimes we get interested in things that go wandering down okay. a path that we had no intention to be on. So we'll get back on task here and. Our, oh, yeah. um, our question this week comes from Earl in Lantana, Florida. Okay. And uh, Earl's been shopping for, for blank CDs. Okay. And, and uh, he said he's confused by the differences in CDs and DVDs that you find out there in the stores. So what's the difference between a CDR, a CDRW, and the same things for DVDs, DVDR and DVDRW? Yeah. That's a really good question. It too. is a good question, Earl, and we thank you for uh, writing that in. Um, let's go through real quickly, and, and we'll just um, kind of give you a, a quick overview of what, what those letters mean. R, after the name of the disc, means it's a, uh, it's a read. In other words, you can copy information to that disc, but once you've done that, it's done. It's right? done. It's a one-time it shot. So if you, and that's the only one, one I hardly I, I've I ever I've actually used. heard uh, it called a write once, read many. Write once, read many. So it's a good way of like if you've got if you want to archive photographs mm -hmm. or um, just move big files around yeah. because CDs have about 750 megs of storage capacity, um, and you know it's a great way if you're just going to burn files to a disk. Typically, that's what you call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, CDR will do the job just fine. Yeah. Um, the other kind of CD and DVD is called an RW. RW is a little trickier. Now that means that you can read and write. Many times. So it's essentially, Earl, the same as um, your, your hard drive or a flash drive or a floppy disk, if you want to go back that far. You can put items on those disks, and you can erase them from the disk. Yeah. So you can read and write. So you can go back and forth. Now, the only other thing that's, uh, that, is, that is something you have to keep in mind is, and this gets a little bit technical, most of what you're going to see out there in the stores are going to say CD-R. And, and those are the ones I filed. And, and, or C or DVD dash R. Mm -hmm. That is the format that's accepted by most of the manufacturers of the drives themselves. Yeah. Now there are other formats out there that are called a plus. So you'll see C D plus R or C D oh. plus R W. What's that mean? Well, it means that the person the, the company that makes the disk drive itself has uh, accepted a, a different kind of formatting specification oh, that okay. might be, and some people say it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit more efficient, but it's also a little bit trickier. You have to know if your computer can accept those kind of disks. Okay. And uh, that's the difference between R's and RW's there, Earl, and uh, thank you for your question. And uh, we hope that you'll write in your questions at palmbreezecafe.com slash questions. And uh, we hope to hear from our viewers out there. And that's about it for today. That's it for today. And we'll be back next week with more for Computers for the Completely Clueless.